some announcements first before I forget them because I'm not even sure this is all of them. But, um, you know, the Hope team came out at the very first of this month for September. But in October, unless they change it, we're scheduled for the third week of every month, the third Thursday of every month. The Hope team will be out here servicing and benefiting our community. That's JPS, the VA, MHMR, Ends of Hope. Everything that True Worth offers will be here. Um, or if they feel more at home if we rewrote the song cocaine from M Captain to Hope Team. You're a hot <laughs> mess. <laughs> You're a hot mess, Mr. McCoy. Um, really? He is a real McCoy. Ah. He is five generations out of the mountain. And if you watch the History Channel's Hatfields and McCoys, it explains a lot. Before Jesus. Before Jesus. Yeah. Um, so then October the 3rd, which is just a couple more weeks away, we begin to, we now have permission and um, they have opened their doors for service and we have permission to go inside for Saturdays. And it's, I know, I'm really excited. Um, it's going to take a lot of work cooperation with all of us to do it. Um, I met with their eldership team, their leadership team, um, week ago Friday I think it was, and kind of went through the expectations that they have. Um, you know, while we are not hearing near as much COVID fanatic stuff in the news like we were, and everything's not quite as chaotic as it was, it is still real and it's still chaotic um, but side note flu is just as bad as COVID so um, don't get me started um, but we have a lot of things that we're going to have to do in order to go indoors like we're going to take your temperature when you come to the door then you have the opportunity to sign up on the needs list then we will wash your hands we won't wash your hands you will wash your hands and then we will seat you at a table and um, if you camp alone, you can be six feet apart from someone else. But we all know that we're community and ain't nobody camp alone. You may spend one night at this camp, you may go to your friend's camp we another night. Camp. So, we so we'll have tables of community camp. areas and, and whatever. And so, and I will tell you this, hear me. They will be watching us on the camera to be sure we do what we say we're going to do. And you might think, what? You know what? Whatever. Somebody's always watching. So, um, we always want to do what's right. Genesis 4, 7 says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If you don't do what's right, then sin's crouching at your door. It desires to have you. It desires to decimate you, master you, rip you apart at the seams. But you must overcome it. So, um, we're going to do what's right. And we're going to just make the system flow because we're all going to cooperate together. We're going to enjoy indoors because winter's coming and it's not fun to try to worship when you can't feel your fingers and try to talk about the word when you can't feel your lips. So, and it's hard to eat soup when you're going like this. So, um, winter's coming. We made it through the summer. Yes, we made it through another summer. Summer's not really over, but it's not 100%. Um, Praise God. Amen. Here go the cups. Um, if all of October goes well, then we will have our first movie night the first Friday in November. Um, I felt, I know, yay! Um, I felt. Some folks don't know what the movie night is. Movie night. Movie night is the first Friday of every month. We get together and we show a movie, and um, it'll be earlier than it used to be because everything's earlier than it used to be. So on Fridays, um, Gethsemane serves at four o'clock so we'll get here about five and we will um have games out that you guys can play while we're getting pop, fresh popcorn ready and cotton candy set up and pickles and just all that good stuff and we hope to have haircuts we were doing haircuts on movie night so i'm hoping that we do that again no, no you don't have to get a haircut mr mccoy um 
And so, um, so movie night is a lot of fun. So movie night will start at um, start at six instead of seven. So it'll be over at nine thirty ish. And um, it's always a great movie. And there's snacks and cookies and sodas and coffee and popcorn and pickles. I mean, it's just like going to the movies, and it doesn't cost you seventy five dollars. They thought that we might start December because we want to see how things go. So hear me, this is like the mother hen talking to her kids. When we go in this grocery store, nobody's going to throw a fit, okay? You know. So I said, how about, since October's got five weeks in it, we will show you in October how well it's going to go so we can have movie night in November. Yes. So that's what we're going to do. So I feel quite certain that... that Going indoors and and having tables and not having to freeze and all that's going to be very beneficial and um, and we're going to use the PowerPoint screens you know when we do worship and stuff so that's fun and um, just a little bit more like we can show videos if I've got a video that goes with if the Lord's placed it on my heart we can show that there it's hard to show video out and um, so I'm excited and that will be a permanent indoor situation. Unless some days it's just beautiful. The two days in Texas that's pretty outside, those two Saturdays, we can meet outside if we want. We always have the option to meet outside. Um, but we've been asking to go inside for a long time. And you need to wear a mask. Yes, yes. Just while we're singing and worshiping, and then it's all over. So, um, yeah. I don't like the clown. Well, you can wear a clown mask. That'd be fun. I was going into the store today, um, doing a lot, couple of last minute things, and this little boy had on like a transformer mask, you know, like a Halloween mask. And so I opened the door for him and his mom and his grandma and said hi. And he was like, he raised it. And he said, do you like my mask? He was so excited about it. I, like, I love your mask. Anyway, he was probably five, maybe four. He was super excited about it. Um, yeah. And then right around the corner, we will have Thanksgiving. And then right around the corner from that, we will have Christmas. And then right around the corner from that, we will have our ladies event. And then right around the corner from that, God willing, we're going to have our first men's event. No, our second men's event. We missed this year. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, government. But do you know scripture tells us that we're to pray for and honor our government? Yes, Whether you voted are. for them or like them or not. Yeah, we are. Because... Why? Because you can't even imagine what the pressure is. I'm telling you, we have a tiny church, and I cannot express. You should be praying for your pastor all the time, too. And Scripture says that. That's why. You can ask God when you get to heaven. That can be the first question you ask him. Why do we have to pray for our government? I did not vote for Trump. It's not me personally. I'm saying this, but somebody might say <laughs> Bless you. <clears throat> um. I really wanted to talk today about love and being made in the image of God and what that looks like. But when we were singing, this just two things just kept coming back at me as we were singing. I don't feel I, I just couldn't even. And by the time you got to what if, all I could do was cry at the end of it. Because I'm here to tell you that if. If, if we're going to start a campaign or, or a contest to see who most doesn't deserve God's love, that right. I'm going to be the first in the line. We're going to stand beside each other. Um, and the song, What If, is just, it's so profound about our identity, okay? So what if I climbed a mountain? What if I swam to that shore? What if every battle was victorious, then would you love me more? Okay, so put that into terminology for us. What if I got the best job in the world? What if I what if I won every contest I ever entered? What if I got the hot, hottest wife or the most <clears throat> buff husband? What if I what if I just did everything perfect? Would you love me more? What if I were everyone's first choice? What if I went above and beyond the call of duty in every circumstance in life? 
And what if I stood high above the rest? I got, while everybody got straight A's, I got all of the bonus points and got above 4.0 GPA. Would you love me more? This is the part that got me. What if I ignored the hand that fed me? What if I forgot? This is, what if I forgot to confess? What if I forgot, what if I forgot, Father, to even talk to you? When I was a prodigal for 14 years, I didn't say one prayer. I didn't talk once to the Lord in 14 years. What if I stumbled down that mountain? What if that ladder that I climbed up in, in corporate America or whatever, what if I fell all the way to the bottom? Would you love me less? What if I were everyone's last choice? What if I blended in with the rest and I looked just like the world and I forgot where I came from and I forgot my identity, I forgot who I was, I forgot how to obey, I forgot how to do what is right, would you love me less? See, when God loved me, before he ever created any of this world, before he designed a plan for my life, before I was ever born, he loved me more than I can ever imagine. I can't understand unconditional love. And you can't either. So don't raise your hand and pretend you can. We all have conditions upon love well, I, we were talking about that on the way here as we were rounding the corner on the Henderson. Yes. We know God. We walk right. We want to obey Him. We are in a relationship with Him. But when something rough happens, sometimes it's hard to unconditionally love. So if I failed everything in life, would you love me less? So He loved me before He made me. He had a plan for my life, which included his love. And he loved me when I was born. He loved me when I was in a foster home. He loved me when I was adopted. He loved me when I got baptized and received him as my savior. I knew Jesus. And July the 28th, 1978, that's when Jesus became my savior. And he loved me just as much and I said, up yours, and walked away. In 1983, just five years later. Pretty much five years to the day, almost. And he never, ever stopped loving me. I tell you, I invented bad words. Not all the bad words that are four letters that we all know those ones that start with certain letters and we all know we all know that I invented bad words that's how bad my mouth was and never once did it ever cross his mind to love me less never once when before the world was created and everything was what it was and Jesus knew he was going to have to pay the price for us because he knew that it was all going to go south and we were going to walk away or we were going to reject him or we were going to not love him or we were going to not want to know him. He said, Lord, Daddy, Abba, put me in, coach. Put me in. Because Jesus knew, because he is also God. And God knows because he is the Father. And the Holy Spirit knows, because he's the Spirit and they're all one, how valuable we are. Okay, so these cookies, if you were to go to Walmart, they, you know, they would cost you $3. We're going to play prices right right here. If you were to go to Kroger's, they'd cost you four fifty. Or if you went to the food bank and they donated them, it didn't cost you anything. So this cookies, these cookies have a monetary value and they're worth what 
the store says you need to pay for them, right? But what if I went into Kroger's and I argued with them and I said, I really want to give you $10 for this package of cookies because these kind of cookies are my favorite kind of cookies. I like M&M's. I've been eating m and for a long time. Longer than some of you have been alive. Would that be crazy? To go into Kroger's and tell them while they got four fifty on the little tag on the on the shelf, I want to give you ten dollars for them because that's how much they mean to me. So Jesus said, "Put me in, Coach," because to me, they're worth the value of my human life. They're worth the value of my divinity laid aside so that I can not only go there and be an example for them to live and show them how to walk as a human, intended at all points and never sinned, engaged in the same world we're engaged in. Okay, my parents thought that my world was bad, okay? I'm sure my grandparents thought my parents' world was bad. Elvis shook his legs. They didn't do that stuff. Elvis. Okay, and then and then you had the Beatles, and then and then you had Kiss. My mother really didn't understand Kiss at all. But I felt the same about my kids' generation, and my kids feel the same about their kids' generation. It was the same thing when Jesus walked the earth. It's just different circumstances. We just changed the param we just changed some of the particulars and maybe even the parameters of it, but it's the same. I promise you, nothing that you have been tempted or encountered by, Jesus wasn't immune to it. He faced it. He faced it, he rejected it, because every breath that he took was to be in right standing with the Father. And you go, well, yeah, he had to do that because he was Jesus. No, he did that because he's love. Because he understood the price that needed to be paid in order for us to be restored. Someone had to come live perfectly in humanity, okay? Jesus can live perfectly in heaven. Jesus does live perfectly in heaven. But then Jesus said, let me be human let me be born the same way all humans are born. Let me have an umbilical cord. I wonder if he had an innie or an outie belly button. <laughs> Random stuff just comes to my mind. Sorry. Same way, born of a virgin through a birth canal with the water breaking in a cave with animals and her community around her because that's how Jewish community did. Fourteen. I mean, we, we kind of shudder at 14 years old today when 14-year-old and ladies are pregnant. That's young. She was young. But the father saw her as eligible, presentable, and worthy to be counted as the son of God. Right? Son of man. Son of God, son of man. But, hear me, please hear me. And if this rocks your theology, don't get mad at me. Read your word. She is not good enough to pray to. That's right. Sorry. She's not even good enough to pray through to the Lord. There is one that we pray through to the Father. And he sits on the mercy seat right there beside him interceding for us not only did he die on the cross as us because we were lost sons and daughters he died on the cross rose from the grave and now sits daily and has to take care of our junk with the father yeah i mean i've been a hot mess for a long time i'm just now a safe hot mess i mean things like does jesus have a belly button in an, an in or an Audi comes through my mind stuff like that all the time The value of something is how much you're willing to pay for it. And the creator of the universe was willing to pay with his son's life, and his son was willing to pay with his life because that's how valuable we are. We're not just created in the image of God. It's more than that. 
it's way more than that. It's the value of who we are. And I'm telling you, if you understood your value, you would live life differently. Right. If you have, I don't even know how much cars cost. I, I haven't bought a new car. I've only had one new car. But I don't even know how much. Travis, how much is a brand new, top of the line, whatever, expensive car? Well, most like 20, 30,000 is like. You can buy like two houses for that. A yeah. white, 30,000 what? Like Camry or, or okay. $30, like some, Camry. some basic. Like that. If you bought a $30,000 Camry. That'd be like six cylinder fully loaded. Fully loaded. Yeah. Six cylinder fully loaded. $30,000 Camry. Would you drive through bushes and scratch up the paint? And would you run over those little nail things that stick up that police try to stop you with? Lighten all your tires? Would you run it out of oil? No! The daggum thing costs more than two houses. Well, not really, but close. The value of it says it is valuable and should be treated as such. And we don't understand that. Because our value is so much, and we drink till we can't stand up, and we stick needles in our arms, and we get in relationships we shouldn't be in, and we have thoughts that we shouldn't have, and we are we self-hate, and we, we put ourselves in positions that valuable would never do. What if I were just scum? Would you love me less? In my deepest, darkest, foulest, nasty moment of my life, you know what the Father said? Philippians tells us. He says, This one's mine. And he cleans me off. The psalmist writes it. He picks me up out of the pit that I dug and cleans me up and sets me on solid ground. He says, now let's do life different. It's like you do your boots. Cleaning them off. We're picking them up. All of them. All of them. Get them out of the fence when they've got the horn stuck in there. Mark lines stuck all around them. Chasing down the road when they got out of the yard. If we could just get if we could just get out of our lost orphan mindset and into our sonship, daughtership mindset, then all of this would make sense. The thou shalt nots wouldn't be thou shalt nots anymore. They would be would you please. Would you please love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Would you please not have any other idols before me and don't bow down and worship anything because everything that's been created doesn't deserve or have value to be worshipped, worship the Creator. And would you please not take my name in vain. That sounds way different than thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. That sounds cold and calloused and within me wants to rebel. That's within me. What if it said, would you please remember the Sabbath and keep it holy? I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw this out. One of the things that I love about our church is that it doesn't matter what condition you're in. To come here. I mean, you know, we've seen it all. We've seen folks fall out of their chair because they can't stand up. We, you know, we've we've seen folks that, that come here just to fight somebody else. We've we've, just, we've seen so much, but here is where love exists, and so here is where you can come in any condition that you are. But how does that fit in? Would you please remember the Sabbath? Typical. Don't know what day the Sabbath is. Just don't call the commercial. Yeah. Today, Saturday is the Sabbath, not Sunday. Another commercial for the record to jack with your theology for today. Nowhere in this word does it say to worship on Sunday. Yeah, and the seventh day of the week is when God rested. And the seventh day of the week is when He said to remember it and keep it holy, to gather together with Him. 
it was changed in like, I don't know, five or 700 AD. 326. Oh, 26 AD, see, whatever. 326 AD. Oh, 326 AD. Council on the Okay, so God never changed it. Jesus never changed it. It's not written in the Word, but it's not a deal breaker. If you want to go to church on Sunday, you go to church on Sunday. And for the record, this is church. Yeah. This right here is church. Right. And in my mind's eye, it's more real church than some churches have tomorrow. Amen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know when we first began, people asked me a lot. So where where do you do church on Sunday? I said, we just had church. Yeah, but what do you, on Sunday morning? Dude, Sunday morning I sleep in. I have worked like a beast to get through Saturday. <laughs> Sunday morning I sleep in. We just had church. Church is where people come together. They love on each other. They're encouraged. They're in, their word is spoken. And they spur one another on. And they serve one another. That's what this is right here. The only thing that we don't do is pass the plate. We kind of do in a way. Kind of do. I mean, you know, if you want to donate five cents, no, leave. Oh, right there. <laughs> Plate. Oh, the food plate. Oh, <laughs> leave, the, cool. leave the fat guy to come up with that. <laughs> and the number, for the, for the fifth commandment, which the Ten Commandments never were put out of place, just for the record. The, the fifth commandment, if we remember the first four are for the Lord. And number five is, would you please honor your mother and father? If I could go back and change something, I mean, there's a long list, but the first one I'd start with is honoring my mother and father. Even though they were broken and trying to do the best they could. And then number six is please don't take from each other. Sounds a lot different than thou shalt not steal. Just please don't take from each other. When we know our identity, the thou shalt not change to will you please. The Beatitudes make more sense. We are to become these things, not do these things. You can do all you want and not get there. Right. You can do all you want and do all this in the beginning of the what if. What if I, you can do climbing the mountain. You can do swimming to that shore. You can do every battle was victorious. But that doesn't mean that you've had a heart change. What has happened is this gospel, especially in the past hundred years, has been preached to become a self-serving gospel. Right. We come to this gospel, right. we come to Jesus so he can do something for me. Yeah. Right. Your right. And not even just that. Let me have, please, Lord, let me have a green light. <laughs> but, you know, when my lights are green, somebody else is red. And how does that fit into that we count others more significant than ourselves? Please let me find a parking spot up front. Please let this be on sale. Please let them show me favor. Please judge, just give me probation. Please, I mean, you know, we can, we really can make that list, okay? And we've changed this into something that serves us instead of something that changes us. This is supposed to change us. This is supposed to be a love letter to us that as we read it, we become it. And so instead of going to church, we are the church. And as we are the church, then there are signs that show we believe. And there's fruit on our tree that shows that Jesus is our Savior. And those signs that follow them that believe are signs and wonders. They're casting out demons and delivering the sick and picking up serpents and drinking poison and not being harmed. And the deaf will hear and the blind will see and the lame will walk. And the church goes in the doors on Sunday and comes out and gets in the car and argues about where they're going lunch. <laughs> when we see that this is to change us, it turns from thou shalt not to will you please. Will you please love me so much that I am the first thought you have in the morning? Will you please love me so much that as I sing over you as you sleep, Zephaniah 317, that you wake up in the middle of the night and join me in song. Right. That's cool. That's it's happened a couple of times, but it is awesome. If 
we could really understand this. If we could really understand this, we wouldn't use such a paper to throw snacks. If we, if we could really understand this, not only would your life be changed and my life be changed, continue to change. I am more in love with Jesus today than I was yesterday. I'll be more in love with him tomorrow than I am today. Because I'm not done spending time with him. I've spent time with him all day long. Everything I do is for his glory. You know, the... Holy is the Lord God Almighty. All the earth is filled with his glory. And when we sang that, I actually folded my paper to, to highlight that to me. Because... If we don't have our eyes set on the right thing, then we look around and we see hate, and we see prejudiceness, and we see evil, and we see crime, and we see drugs, and we see the effects of all of the sin in the world. Or you can look around and see that that bird that just made noise is actually singing praises to the Lord. And if you've ever seen something born and breathed its first breath, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Or 11 things. Or 11. Or now 14. We had um, quite a stressful day yesterday. And had a goat that, had we not been able to assist her, not only would have she have died, but all four of her babies died. Would have died. Um, instead, two made it. And, um, and Mama's seemingly okay. My granddaughter said, I'm never having kids. I'm going to adopt. <laughs> it was a little bit traumatic for her. <clears throat> and the first breath and the first walk and the first seeing like the puppies when they were born, they're born with their eyes closed and their ears closed. All they can do is smell. God designed them to be able to, with a heightened sense of smell to know where their mother is at all times. So they know where their bottle is going to be. Where the milk bar is. They don't even have eyes open and they can't even walk, but they can crawl and scoot and figure it out because they can smell. There is so much design all around us when we see that this world brings God glory. The birds sing and, and the squirrel that just ran up that tree scampers for his glory, even if he's stealing your lunch. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> we were at Bible study one time, and, and I'll be dead dumb if not only was the squirrel not helping himself, he ended up just taking a whole lunch, trying to take a whole lunch. <laughs> um, but there's so much glory in all of that when we take our eyes off the evil. Remember, we're from this world, not of this world. I got to live here until he calls me home. I have to live here and live for his glory and do what he's called me to do for no other reason than I love him and he saved me and he gave me back my identity. I was a lost, addicted, evil, foul-mouthed, hateful, self-hate, adultery, um, codependent, alcoholic, murderer at heart. I mean, I could, I could decimate, I could, I could decimate anybody in my world. I, I was not what God designed me to be. And then, when John 3, you read John 3, and Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, and he said, here's how you be born again. You get born again, you get, the, you get filled with the Spirit, you get evidence of the Spirit, you get baptized in water, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then your whole world's going to change. Because your identity becomes real. It's like you're chipping off all this stuff that isn't who you are. I mean, what if I showed up one day with with black hair and and wranglers. Now I wear cowboy boots, so that wouldn't be, but I've never worn wranglers. No. Black hair and wranglers and, and a dip of snuff in my mouth and <laughs> saying bad words. You would go, that does not look like you. Yeah. Well, when the father looks at us who have not been born again and aren't actively being transformed he says that's not you that's not who you are remember in the beginning when i scooped up dirt 
and I stuck my face in it and then breathed life into you and you said, <clears throat> all babies do that. All life comes that same way. You looked like me and you were love. We were love. We were made perfect and we were love. And then sin entered in and then we became in need of love. And now everything we do is self-serving. Because I'm going to tell you I love you so that you can tell me you love me back. And I'm going to give you this so that either everybody sees or that you'll give me something back. And I'm going to scratch your back if you'll scratch my back. And then we're going to live in this even tit-for-tat world. Or you just become love. And you just give till it hurts. Because it's not a sacrifice if it doesn't hurt. If you've got $100,000 in your pocket and you cast down 10 bucks to somebody... Bully for you. It didn't hurt. It didn't make a mark. It didn't make a dent. It took absolutely no sacrifice in order for that to be given. So when we are lost, we need to be found. When we are blind, we need to see. When we're deaf, we need to hear. There's a problem. Even sitting in here today, I can tell you, there are people that don't know they're lost. They don't know they're blind, and they don't know they're dead. And what else they don't know is that they're dead in their trespasses. And at the end of time, one of two people is going to pay for your wrongdoings at the end of life. And it'll either be you or Jesus. Ain't nobody going to pay your bill for you. Darren's not going to step up and pay my bill. I'm not going to step up and pay his bill. Jesus paid our bill. I don't want to have to pay my bill. My bill is long and nasty. And I'm forever grateful that he counted me worthy. And he can't love me less. And he can't love me more. You go, well, what do you mean he can't love me more? I mean that he loves you so much, so far off the chain right now, that you can't even fathom it. And that you will be so touched when you get the other side of time is it like that mercy me song says um how's that song go about falling at the feet huh oh i can only imagine i can only imagine he wrote that song because his dad had passed away um and and he could only imagine what his dad was going through i, I thought think about it with my mom you know my mom was in such bad hell and she got up out of the car from having a birthday dinner with my daughter and family, because the next day was her birthday, her favorite meal, liver and onions. got up out of the car, took two steps, and then her third step was in the presence of Jesus. Gosh, that's amazing. We can't fathom what Revelation talks about when John said that he was taken in spirit up to the third heaven and, and he saw everything that was up there. There's not even words to really describe it and we try to imagine. I can't imagine what eyes of fire look like. I know what eyes of anger and hate look like, but that's not eyes of fire. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed. When I died to self, daily died to self, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus said it in all of them, that you are to die to self daily and take up your cross and follow him. Well, who around here is carrying a cross? I mean, I happen to know a couple of cross carriers, but I'm not carrying a cross. But I am carrying the walk that he did so that I can do and follow him. And daily I died to self. I was tired today, guys. Yesterday was long and hard. I am tired today. And I could have just stayed in bed. But I died to self and did what he called me to do because of my love for him. You know, we read, I sang the song Chain Breakers, which is the other thing that the Lord just really resonated in my heart. When we first came out here several years ago, we sang that song over and 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 over again. Because we were trying to get folks used to this. Okay, you're used to going in a building 
and you got a, a band or a choir and, and, and words and everybody else is singing and you can just kind of blend in and you can go <laughs> like you're singing. Um, and so this was different. So we began to do the same songs so that people could learn them with intention of the songs that we sang because it was important for me as direction from him to know, to give the information that you guys can break the chains that are keeping you in bondage. You're either going to be a slave to sin or a bond servant to Jesus Christ. There's no in between. You're either going to serve yourself or you're going to serve him. There's no in between. This gospel of itself serving, the, the other option is that it changes you. There is no in between. There's no in between between off and on or right or left or smoking or non-smoking or heaven or hell or good or evil or right or wrong. I don't even know if I said that one right. That's right. There is no in between. There is no in between in this either. You're either in or you're out. You're either in the boat or you're out of the boat. And at the end of time, you'll either be in the goat line or in the sheep line. There is no third option. Well, well, I didn't know you were for real. Well, nobody told me. Well, I went to church every Sunday and I gave my money. How come I'm in the goat line? Well, there will be one or the other option and that is it. And I'm not a hellfire and brimstone kind of thing, but I am here to tell you that it's important. Um, there was a song that I heard for the first time this week, and I don't remember the name of it. It's by David Dunn. It's a new song. And and he's, he's saying that we're all given an amount of time. The Father already knows our last day. He already knows everything that we're going to choose to do. We're given an amount of time and you may not have another hour, but you may have another 25 years, but you don't know. And are you living life to the fullest? Good song. It really made me introspective. Introspective. It really made me look within to see if I'm living life to the fullest. I mean, you only get one shot. And this life is a dress rehearsal for that life. This is a dress rehearsal for that life. So back to Chainbreaker. Um, when we were singing Chainbreaker and singing, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. I mean, this whole song, y'all take the papers with you. I think y'all already did. Fold them up or something. Don't use them to smoke. Use them to read. Read these words. And at some point, maybe throughout the week, and you're sitting at camp and life has been rough, and you came back to your camp and everything was gone, or it rained and everything was flooded, or whatever. Or it was bad dope, and now you're really suffering from it. Or you drink way more than you thought you should. And now you got a PI ticket. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, do you know what the definition of insanity is? Anybody? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. I'm here to tell you, I know the answer. I know him personally. I know him personally. I know Michael Jordan. I know a lot about Michael Jordan. I know a lot about Michael Jordan. I know a lot about the Dallas Cowboys when Roger Staubach and Tom Landry were in there. But I don't know them. I have never met a single one of them. But I know Jesus. I have met him. I have met him. He is my savior. He changed my life. I'm not who I was. My old is dead and gone. Second Corinthians 5.17. My new life is here and present and growing. Daily I am continuing to die to self, pick up my cross and follow him and being transformed into the image of Christ. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. You know, you've heard me talk about 
before where Paul was um, looking for a protege, a student, to take up the mantle because he knew his time was short and he needed to train somebody. And this is 40 years after Jesus died. 40, only 40 years. Raise your hand if you're over 40 in here. Okay, I'm just saying. It was only 40 years and Paul looked and looked and looked and found one student worthy. One. That's terrible. But he did find one. And Paul instilled into him what I desire to instill into you that should we ever be this is a commercial. Should we ever be out on a limb for the cause of Christ? I pray you take it strong and with a brave face. Sign me up for the guillotine when we get to that place. The Christianity is no longer allowed. I will never, ever renounce my allegiance to the Father. I don't care what you cut off, pull out, burn. You know, you know, you got to understand that in Nero's time, in the Roman ruler's time, when this New Testament was being written, especially the end of it, Acts and on, that they were taking folks like us that they would catch at church and boil them to death in hot oil. They would tar you and feather you. They would roll you in, in a tiki torch fluid and stick you on a stake and you would be light in the backyard. They would cut you in half. They would tie horses to you and tell them to yah and go that way. We don't want to follow the Ten Commandments. Really? We don't understand what it means to die to self and get our life restored to us. So Paul and Timothy and Silas, they did a lot of journeying and going into all the world of this gospel. And um, Paul and Silas, as they were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. Y'all know what that means? Chick could tell the, the winning of the horse races. And she would tell them who was going to win and they would place a bet because of the demons inside of her. So she followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Girls filled with demons, and look what she said. These are men of the Most High God, and what are they doing? They're proclaiming to you the way out the way of salvation and she kept doing this for many days and Paul became greatly annoyed turned and said to the spirit remember Ephesians 6 we don't wrestle with flesh and blood it was not that girl's fault and turned to the spirit and said I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and it came out at that very hour do you see there's not three old chapters about this it didn't take 18 days and tying her to a bed and shaking water over her and he just said come out in the name of Jesus you do know that the name of Jesus is above all names that the power that's in his name gives us the ability in right standing to cast out demons to heal the sick to make the blind see that's what we're called to do but when her owner saw that the hope of gain was gone they seized Paul and Silas dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers and when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are Jews and they're disturbing our city. <laughs> Is that really the problem they had? Heck no, they took away their income. Dudes were making some pretty heavy bucks on this chick. And now they shut that off and here they are. Broke. So they come up with another reason. These men are Jews and they're disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us Romans to accept or practice. So the crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates tore garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. All he did was free the girl. That's all he did. They freed the girl. She now walks in freedom. 
she's now no longer, you know, in Mark 7, there's a dad who had a little boy who had demons, and that little boy kept throwing the little boy, the demons, threw the little boy into the fire to burn him. The little boy would throw, the demons would throw the little boy under the water and hold him down to drown him. The demons were trying to kill this little boy. Demons are mean nasty. They may be fun when you're doing a Ouija board, but look out, they're real. And they are, but they are nothing compared to them. So, they beat them with rods, and when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them safely. And receiving this order, he put them into the inner prison and fashioned their feet in stocks. Who would be mad? Thank you for being honest. Did they do anything wrong? But they brought them before the courts, they beat them with rods, they threw them in the inner prison, they put them in stocks, and all they did was free a girl. And guess what Paul and Silas did? About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were going, whoa, is me. Dead gummit, we should have been at that other city and this wouldn't have happened to us. If we'd have skirt skirt, got out of here before all that took place, if we'd have just ignored that girl, if we hadn't delivered her, if we'd have let her just be bound by demons, if we'd just left her like we had, we wouldn't be here today. Did it say any of that? Heck no. They were singing praises to God. Are y'all with me? I mean, I know you're tired. I get it. I'm tired too. That rocks my world. To know that when bad stuff that they didn't deserve happened to them, they didn't whine about it. We whine about when bad stuff happens to us that we caused. Yeah. Come on, I'm just saying. <laughs> about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds came off. That's a pretty serious earthquake. You know when you need a key to unlock your handcuffs and all of a sudden all their handcuffs fell off. The earthquake caused all the doors to open. I promise you that all the doors didn't open the same way. It wasn't like the whole earthquake made the jail lean this way and all of a sudden all the doors fell open. It was a supernatural event. An earthquake happened, all the doors came open, and all their stocks came off. So guess what? What should that what would you have done? Who would have ran? Sweet! The doors are open, it's dark, nobody can see me, my handcuffs are off, I'm out of here. I didn't do anything wrong anyways. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone bonds were unfastened. And when the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. Because he was going to die anyways. Because escaped prisoners means your death. But Paul cried in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them out and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? God wants to cause an earthquake in your life so that the prison doors are open and the shackles come off because he's a chain breaker. And when he opens those doors and removes those shackles and you praise him, and then come back, he will still open those doors and remove those shackles because he's a loving father. And he gave to us a new identity. We shouldn't reject it. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the words that you had today. Um, speechless. I thank you that you set us free. I thank you that you give us a new identity. I thank you that you help us get rid of our old identity. I, help, I thank you that you help us walk in the newness of life. I thank you that we no longer have to be a slave to sin, but we get to be a bondservant to you. I thank you that the thou shalt nots have changed to will you please. 
Will you please come away with me, you say to us, as you woo us. Holy Spirit, I ask that you woo everyone here today. Period. Even those that are already walking the walk and talking, to, woo me, woo me. Draw me closer to you, Daddy. Holy Spirit, do what you do best. We want freedom. If we can't get freedom on our own, then do it for us. Put us in the place that we cannot do anything but cry out to you. I pray that for everyone, including myself. Thank you for your grace. All those things that... Man, we don't deserve. We don't deserve mercy. We don't deserve unconditional love. We don't deserve forgiveness. I thank you that, Jesus, you felt us valuable enough to pay a price. To restore us. Because we were so lost. Are so lost. Help us, Father, to seek you out. Help us to be grateful to you, Jesus. Help us to have fruit on our tree. Holy Spirit, help us to hear you. Help us to stay in constant communication with you. Help us to wake up in the night, Jesus, and see your face and see you interceding for us and see the Father singing over us and join in in song. Grow us in our intimacy with you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you for all of the things that bring you glory. And I pray all of this in the powerful name above all names, King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus Christ.